Book of John, chapter 13. As, as you guys are turning to Book of John, chapter 13, you know, last week we learned about being baptized. We learned that, bapti that baptism is something that's serious, something that requires a lot of thought, something that requires us to really think about and really make a commitment on. We learned that baptism was not like taking a bath. It's that washing of the body with water. That what it really is, is being born again. It's a symbolism of being born again. That we are partaking in Jesus' death and resurrection, right? You guys all remember that, right? That our spirit is being cleansed with the blood of Christ. We learned that we should be baptized when we are ready to make this commitment for God. That we have to consciously say, God, I'm here and I'm partaking in your blood. I'm going to be dead with you, but I'm going to rise with you. We have to make that commitment. And then I challenged all of you who are not yet baptized to think about what would keep me from being baptized? That was the title of the message for last week. What is keeping me from making a commitment to God and only God? We learned that we cannot truly experience the true joy, peace, fulfillment that God promises until we make this commitment. Because all relationship requires commitment and that God made his com commitment to us first by dying for us first and he's just simply asking us not to literally die but to partake in his death we don't have to die because Jesus died for us all we have to do is partake in that death that Jesus has died I shared the t uh, my testimony that I was uh, baptized when I was 15, but then I was baptized again uh, when I was 18 uh, in Southern California Ocean. I asked why I was baptized twice and whether that nullified my first baptism. And this is the title of the message today. Do I need to be re-baptized? Do I need to be re-baptized for all of you who were already baptized. Okay, so let's all read chapter 13 of book of John, verses 1 through 10. Okay, I'll read. You guys could follow along. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put in to the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel tighter around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, what I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter asked 
I said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean and you are clean, but not every one of you. Okay. So what Jesus says here is this, if I do not wash you, you have no share with me. If God doesn't wash you, you have no share with God. If God does not wash you of all of your sins, you have no part with God because sin remains. If God does not wash you with his blood, you cannot have part with Jesus Christ. If God doesn't cleanse you from everything of this world and you are reborn, you have no part in Christ. Now, Jesus tells Peter, well, when he said this, Peter said, well, not only my, my feet, but just wash everything. Just cleanse me all the time. Just give me a bath every single time. But to this, Jesus says this, the one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean, and you are clean, but not every one of you. So the answer to today's question of, do I need to be rebaptized? Is very simple. If you have bathed, you do not need to bathe again. You just have to clean your feet. In other words, if you have truly been baptized, you do not have to be rebaptized. You just have to be cleansed of your sin by repenting, just cleaning your feet. Just your daily sin, whatever you did, whatever things that you did to, to kind of dirty yourself that day, that's what you have to be clean from. If you have been born again, you do not have to be reborn again and again and again. Reborn is once a lifetime for all eternity. You know, you are born physically once. Just because you are injured, because you have a scar, because you come up upon a sickness, that doesn't mean you die and then you are reborn as a toddler, right? You are healed and then you go on. You might have scars, but you continue to live. Same thing. And Jesus, does he come and die every single year? Was he born again to die again? Does he repeat his birth crucifixion and resurrection no Jesus only died once and he was buried and resurrected we are saved once and for all we are baptized once the question is was I really truly absolutely baptized the first time around that is the question now, I know a lot of you, most of you, have been baptized already. Like I said before last week, many people struggle in their Christian life because they say, hey, I'm saved. I was baptized. How come I don't feel any different from other people? How come I don't have the joy? How come I don't have the peace? How come my life is not fulfilled? Many people don't feel the presence of God in their walk with God. Well, maybe because they were maybe never on the road with God in the first place. You know, Sunday school teachers tell children ministry, children this, all you have to do is accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and ask him into your life. Pretty simple. It kind of sounds like this. I don't have to do anything. I'm just here. I said, Jesus Christ, come into my life and do something for me. I'm just going to be here. You come and whatever you got to do, do it. Well, relationships don't work that way. But relationship is like that when you're a kid. Your parents take care of you. They just come into your life and just do things for you. 
But you are not kids forever, right? Because that's not normal. All of you are maturing every single year. All of you are growing, not only physically getting big. I mean, I see many of you have grown so much since, since I've seen you three years ago. When Sunday school teachers tell children that, it's because children don't comprehend what relationship really is. They don't understand what sacrifice is. They don't understand what love really entails. It's like the nation of Israel, right? They sacrifice animals at the altar and they think their sins are washed away. Well, that's kind of silly. How does me killing a lamb wash away my sin? That just doesn't make any sense. With that realization that that symbolizes Jesus Christ, that when I do that, that is partaking in Jesus' death and resurrection. That represents, not, that's not just a lamb, it's Jesus Christ. Until you know that, that action really doesn't have any meaning. As children don't understand, sometimes people don't understand. But as we mature, as we are growing in Christ, as we are growing in the knowledge of the Bible and Scripture, we become more and more aware of what relationship truly is. As you realize more and more of what is right and what is wrong, what it means to be a child of God, as you understand more of who God is, how He loves us, and what he wants from you. Now your ability to have a relationship with God increases, right? You guys don't have a relationship with God. Same with when you're like second graders now. It's a lot more mature now. It's not more interactive. So here's the question. How do you know if you were really, truly, absolutely baptized when you were baptized think back to when you were baptized if you took a vow if you committed to loving God and only God with all of your heart soul and mind then you don't need to be rebaptized if you made that commitment to serve God only you do not need to be rebaptized. But many youth at the beginning may not fully comprehend what that is. But even if you didn't understand the fullness of that, but when you were baptized, you confessed, you made a confession to God that you want to have a relationship because you love Him very much. You realize what He did for you. Oh, He died for me because He loves me. And I confess, Lord, I accept you as my personal Savior. You are my Father, and I'm going to have a relationship with you. Please take me, forgive me. And as you are maturing every single day, every single year, and you understand more and more about God, more about what you actually did when you actually made that commitment, and as you grow more and more in knowledge and more, and more about God, your relationship is growing more. You might not have fully understand, and you probably don't fully understand. I don't fully understand the exact relationship with God. But as we get to know more and more, the amount we are mature, we love God that much more. Then you don't need to be rebaptized because... Your faith is keeping up with your maturity. Basically, your heart doesn't change. Just because you have more knowledge doesn't mean your heart is changing. Your heart is just getting bigger. It's understanding more. And you could have a more complex relationship. That's all it means. Then you don't have to be rebaptized. Even though you didn't fully understand the first time, if you're maturing and your heart is not changing, 
that you are still loving God, then you don't need to be rebaptized. But if you were baptized because of your parents of your or your youth pastor, you just were baptized without really taking a commitment for God. If you really are not considering God, if God is really not part of your life, and that baptism wasn't a confession of your devotion to him, your love for him, you may need to ask yourself, if you're baptized from the first time around, was it really true and sincere? You may need to evaluate your heart and assess where you are with God. If you conclude that you have not yet fully committed to Christ and God, you may need to be truly baptized for the first time. It's not rebaptism. The old baptism wasn't real. You probably need to be really baptized for the first time. As we close, what is truly important is not the act of baptism, not getting dunked in the water and coming out, but the heart, heart of baptism when you are baptized. Do you love God? Do you want to love God with all of your heart, soul, and mind? Do you really want to have a relationship with God? Do you want to spend time with him every day, talking to him? Do you look forward to time with Christ? If you are ready, I really want you to be baptized, okay? Especially before we go, because we have the baptism uh, tub here. Uh, let me know, and uh, let Pastor Joseph know, and then, and then we'll get you scheduled for baptism. Now, if you're not ready, it's okay. It says in the Bible, in his time. Whose God? time? God's time. God never forces anyone. He's waiting for you with an open arm, like the father of the prodigal son. He's waiting for you to have that aha moment when you come to your senses and say, you know what? All these things in my heart, all these things that I want, none of that really matters. I kind of understand now. I need God above everything else. It might not be now, and it's okay in God's time. So, I need for all of you, especially those who are not ready, to really pray to God, because you know what God did for you, and you know how much God loves you. Pray to God to give you the wisdom to truly see that God is the greatest pursuit for your life, the only true hope and joy. You need to fully realize that in your heart. Pray to God to give you the willpower and strength to overcome the things of this world, your self-centeredness, to desire what you want only, and have the willpower and strength to desire what God desires. Because you know that that's the good thing. No, that's the best thing for you. You already know that. You just don't have the willpower and strength to make that commitment, maybe. Pray to God to give you the spirit of submission so that you can submit yourself to God. You know you should, but you might not have the spirit of submission. You, have, you may have spirit of pride. Sp spirit of, I want to do what I want to do. You know, this spirit of submission, this willpower, this wisdom cannot and it does not come from yourself. It comes from God. I need all of you to pray to God for it because you say, I desire it. Okay? Everybody close your eyes. Wow. Baptism. Being born again. Partaking in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Wow. 
something that will change my life forever. I will not be the same person tomorrow as I was today. <coughs> I need all of you to take a moment. If you have been baptized already, ask yourself, am I in this relationship with God? Was my baptism true? Did I really take a vow? Did I really commit to God? If yes, great. Continue your walk with God and have God cleanse your feet every single day. Go to him in repentance and God, would you wash me please? I dirtied my feet today. But all of you who have never taken a bath, who have never been cleansed all the way from your head to your toe from, for, from your sins by Jesus Christ, ask yourself, what's keeping me from being baptized? If you are ready to make that commitment, contact me. Go to God, we confirm, make that commitment, give me a call, and we'll get you baptized. If you are not ready to make that commitment because for whatever reason, the things you want to do, the, thing, the things you want, the sins that you still like, the sins you can't give up, the things that you want for your life that's contrary to what's in the Bible, or just you just want to do whatever you want to do. If that's what's in your heart, it's still okay. God understands. But God is saying, hey, my particle son, my particle daughter, come back to me. I'm ready for you. I need you to never lose sight of God. You may be only dating God because you haven't made that commitment. But don't let Satan cut your ties with God entirely. Grab hold of God. And pray for God to give you the wisdom, the willpower, the strength, the spirit of submission so that you could desire him more. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. I know you love all of these kids, Lord, this, this youth. You love them so much that you die for them, Lord. You love them and you're just holding out your arm. You, you're cleaning their feet every single day as they are being dirtied by this world, by the things that they're, that they're doing or saying without thinking about it. I pray that each one of us would come to you and ask for the cleansing, Lord. And I pray that all of us, whether now or tomorrow or near future, would commit to you in our youth, Lord, that in our youth, we will not waste this youth on, on meaningless, purposeless stuff. The empty fun and enjoyment of, of this world. But would really take this youth time to come to our senses and start a real relationship with you. Our Father who loves us so much, Lord. We thank you that you're keeping us safe and healthy, Lord. And I pray that you would continue to provide for us, Lord. I pray that you would, you would bless this church as we are moving. That you would give all of the leaders wisdom. So everything that they, that they do, all the decision is made per your will, Lord. I pray that we would uh, get a new CM minister, uh, pastor, who is full of love for you and for the kids, Lord. We pray all these things in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. I have uh, some good news. Teacher James is joining us from Korea. I think it's like 3 in the morning now. Thank you so much, Teacher James, for your dedication. So, uh, Teacher James's class, we'll, we'll be having the, the class uh, right immediately after this. There's a CCC Youth Winter Retreat. Oh, not retreat. Conference. On December 26th. This is different from the youth wave on the 28th through 30th. This is just for, for our, our church. From 10 a.m. to maybe 3 or 5. Okay? So I really need all of you to join. 
Lastly, we're having a family praise night, not a competition. For Christmas Eve, okay, all the family is going to be recording a Christmas family carol and sending it to our pastor song. And then we will be showing that on the Christmas Eve and all of the family who participate will get a token of appreciation from the church too. All right, so let's go into our small group meeting.